Why can't I just have everything together? But no, because that would be too convenient. I lost my scissors. Michelle here, also known as Fancy Dice for Tea Party, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to make this sweater. So normally when I make my tutorial videos, I never start off showing you what, what I'm making. Well, I do, but I don't. I decided, you know what? I wanna show you what you're in for before you start watching this video, just in case this isn't it for you. And if it is, please enjoy the rest of this video. This whole project is just centered around double crochets. All of it is just double crochets. And then, I mean, for the wrists, you will have to do some single crochets. The colors for this project are these two here. I bought more yarn than I thought I needed because the last project that I did, this project, I needed so much of this pink color. When I went shopping for these colors, there was literally like two balls of this left in the store and there was a bunch of this orange one. It was very rare to find this one. So then I ended up going to another Michaels and I bought two or three more of these and then the same matching of this. I love these colors so much. Like I can think of so many projects that I'm going to use these for. For this yarn, it is a medium for weight and it also tells you to use a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook or a USI 9. I used a 5 millimeter crochet hook which is a USH 8. I actually remember that now. You can use the 5.5 or the 5 or you could use the I 9 or the H 8. Personally, I do like using the smaller hook. This is what it turns out with the 5. This project is actually really simple to make and it's really quick to make. I really enjoyed making it. The only reason why it took me so long to finish this is because as I was like nearing the end of this project, I'm like, oh, well now I gotta film all the steps for it. Filming and editing and stuff like that does take its toll. So that's the only reason why it took me a little bit longer, but hey, if you're not filming yourself doing this, you'll get it done a lot faster. So most asked question, and I usually answer this at the end because it's usually when I'm done the project and I find out, but I already know the answer. So I'm gonna let you know now before you start your project, just in case you're like, you know what? Maybe I'm gonna go to the yarn store and buy some yarn before I start this project so you know how much you're gonna need. They are the same brand, so they are the Craft Smart brand, and each one of these rolls is 198 grams or seven ounces. Does not give me the meters, because sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. The pink color here, I used about a ball and a half of this. How about I put the math right here because I can't calculate it in my head right now. So I will put the math here of how many grams you're going to need of the pink. And then for the orange, I actually had to use three of these. Well, more like two and a quarter because for the orange, I did all of my trims like all my ribbing and stuff. I also started off my chaining of each piece with the orange and I connected all the pieces together with the orange. So one color, you're gonna need more yarn than the other. For the orange, I used roughly this many grams. I will do the math later. And for the pink, I used roughly this many grams. Take it with a grain of salt. I'm not 100% sure. Now everyone's project might turn out a little bit different and it all depends on your crocheting styles. I have a very loose crochet style. Like my crochet stitches aren't very tight together and the tighter they are, the smaller your squares are going to be. So that's gonna affect your math as well. I'm also gonna let you know the math of each of these squares and everything during the video when we get to the certain parts, I will inform you. And then it all depends also on your weight of yarn. If you're not using the same yarn that I'm using, that's fine. You do you. But I just want to let you know that if you're using a thinner yarn, your project's going to come out a little bit smaller. If you're using a thicker yarn, your project's going to come out a lot bigger. So just take that in mind when you do this project. This is the yarn I used to achieve this look. That's pretty much all I can say. I just wanted to get that out of the way so you know kind of like the little bit of the basics of what went into making this. So let's get right into actually making it. For this project, you're gonna wanna have your two colors of choice. The yarn that I'm using is a medium for weight, and it does tell me to use a five by five millimeter crochet hook, but I'm not gonna use that one. I'm gonna be using my five millimeter crochet hook, also known as a USH8, and a pair of scissors. So for the front and the back, I'm gonna be doing six squares across by five squares up and down. And for the sleeves, I'm gonna be doing four by four. Each square is going to be 15 stitches across and six rows up. And here are the dimensions of one square. Now both the sleeves and the front and the back, they're done the exact same way. I'm not doing anything different. It's just the front and the back, you're gonna have to make a lot more squares. And this here is actually my final measurements. This is after I've added the cuffs, the ribbing on the bottom and the ribbing on the collar. 
To start off this project, you're gonna wanna pick one color because this is the color you're gonna chain with before you start switching colors. But to start off, you're gonna wanna make yourself a slip knot. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the tail end with my right hand, and then I'm going to grab this part of the yarn with my left, and then I'm also gonna grab the working yarn with my three fingers of my right hand, so it kinda looks like this. Keep your right hand just like this, and then you're gonna take your left hand and you're gonna twist it. So you're twisting it and you're making an X. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put all your fingers in your thumb, through that little circle that we kind of made and then you're gonna grab the working yarn just like that okay and then you're gonna pull and you're gonna stick your crochet hook through now yes this is a very long tail it probably does not need to be that long but also the longer tail the easier it is it's gonna be for you to stitch it into your project and hide it because if it is too short it just doesn't work well if you have a little bit of extra tail that is fine now I'm going to chain a ton of stitches. For the sleeve, I need to chain 62. To chain, I'm going to yarn over. I'm gonna take my hook, I'm gonna make sure it catches that yarn. I'm gonna pull it through the loop I had on my hook. You're just yarning over and pulling through. Yarn over, pull through. That is it. And this is going to create a chain in which you're going to build all your double crochets and all your squares out of. So this is something that you definitely need to start. Now for the sleeves, like I said, you need to chain 62. And for the front and the back, you need to chain 92. The reason why you have to do 62, because 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15 is 60. But the reason why you have your chain of two is because you need to build height of your project. When you're moving your weight back, those extra two right here, they're gonna count as your first double crochet. So to start doing a double crochet, you're gonna yarn over, you're gonna skip one, you're gonna skip two, you're gonna go into the third one right here. You're gonna yarn over, you're gonna pull through, you're gonna yarn over, you're gonna pull through two loops, you're gonna yarn over one more time, and you're gonna pull through two more loops. That is it, two stitches right now, and we need a total of 15, so I need to do 13 more. I'm gonna yarn over, go into the very next chain right there, yarn over, pull through, Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two more. Yarning over, going into the next stitch. Yarning over, pulling through. Yarning over, pulling through two. Yarning over, pulling through two more. So what I'm doing is I'm doing 15 double crochets because I like the size of the squares that I do and to do that it is 15 chains across. On the 15th stitch, it is gonna be a little bit different. So you're gonna yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through yarn over, pull through two, and that's where you're gonna stop. So instead of doing that other yarn over, pull through, we're gonna stop here because this is where we add our second color. I am going to make myself another slip knot, take this loop, and I'm gonna put it on my crochet hook, and then I'm going to tighten it like that and leaving a little bit of a tail because I need to work that into my project. So instead of yarning this over and pulling through, I'm gonna take my pink loop here and I'm gonna pull it through the two orange loops that I have on my hook. There we go, and now we can start our next color. To start at the next color, I'm gonna be doing the exact same double crocheting where I'm gonna yarn over, and I'm gonna go through the next loop. Now what's different here is when I go through the loop, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure the color that I'm not using is draped over my hook as well as the tail end. Now the tail end is only gonna last so far and then you don't ever have to worry about the tail of this color of yarn. And then I'm going to yarn over with the pink, pinch the orange, the pink tail and the chain, and I'm gonna go through that stitch, and then I'm gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that is our first double crochet. I'll show you again. So I'm yarning over, going into the next stitch down here, inserting my hook, making sure that the color I'm not using and my tail is draped over my hook. Then I'm gonna yarn over, pinch the orange I'm not using, the tail and the chain, pinch it all together, and then pull my hook through. Then I'm gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now I have two pink chains, yarn over, go into the next stitch, drape the two yarns I'm not using over, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now, as you can see, I no longer have to worry about the tail of the pink because it's already hidden in there. Now we're just have to worry about hiding the color I'm not using. I'm going to yarn over, go into the next stitch. And as you can see, I'm only draping over the color I'm not using now. I'm gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two more. Gotta do 15. 
And remember on our 15th one, we're gonna yarn over and we're just gonna pull through the two. Before we move on and go back to the orange, what you have to do is you have to take the working orange and I just hold this down and just gently pull. Okay, so you're just gonna pull that through so then that tightens this. Because if it is not tightened, then your squares might all be different shapes. They might not be the perfect square you want because the tension might be off for each square. So I like just to pull the color I'm not using just, just a little bit, just to cinch them in. Now that that is cinched in, I can yarn over with my orange color and pull through and start my next square with more double crochets, but now with the orange color. So I'm gonna do 15 of these. Once again, I'm stopping with two loops on my hook before I start the next color, and I'm going to pull the pink color, just to tighten that up a little bit, okay? I'm going to yarn over with the pink and pull through, and I'm gonna do 15 chains of pink. Now that I'm at the very end, I gotta make sure that I pull my orange, that way it's nice and tight, and then I need to hide the color that I'm not using. So what I found that I, I think works best for me, there might be another way to do it that's even better. This is what I discovered, is I'm actually gonna take both pieces of my yarn, I'm gonna loop them over my hook, and then I'm gonna pull through both. I'm going to chain two with the same color pink because I want six rows of the same color, so that's just yarning over and pulling through. And now I'm working my way back. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to skip the chain I did, plus, skipping that first stitch right here, and I'm gonna go into the next one, okay? So I'm yarning over, skipping the chain, skipping the first stitch, and going in here. Now what's different from here and what I was doing before is that the chain was only one loop, where this, there's a loop here, and there's a loop right here. Insert my hook through both those loops, making sure that the color I'm not using is draped over my crochet hook. Then I'm gonna yarn over, gonna pinch what I'm working on, and I'm gonna pinch the color I'm not using, pull through both of those, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two more. And that's it. Now you're just doing the exact same steps that you did on the first row for the second row, except how on the chain we were only going through one loop. Here we're going through both these loops at the top. So yarn over, go through both those little loops, as well as making sure your other color is draped over, yarning over, pulling through two, yarning over, pulling through two. And that is it. There's nothing different for the rest of this project, as long as you're hiding the color you're not using, doing double crochets, and you're making sure that you're doing the exact same amount of stitches per square. For me, again, it is 15 stitches across. You get to the end, you yarn over, you pull through, you yarn over, pull through two. You're gonna pull the color you're not using. You see how that cinched in nicely? And you're gonna switch your color. Now that you're at the very end, you have to do your 15th stitch. You can't really see it sometimes. You have to go all the way down here. First, you gotta yarn over, Go all the way down here, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and then I'm just gonna pull through one more time. And so now we have 15. Now that we have our six rows, one, two, three, four, five, six, I need to switch over and I need to do orange. Do my six rows of pink, and then I need to do my six rows of orange, and then over here is also gonna be pink. This is gonna be orange, this is gonna be pink. Now I'm gonna show you how to switch your colors in your squares. I'm gonna do the same technique that I always do when moving up. I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna pull through. But now that I'm no longer using the pink and I'm gonna be using the orange, I'm gonna take the orange, and only the orange, yarn over and pull through. So that's two chains. Now that I'm over here, I'm going to yarn over my orange and I'm gonna hide the pink. Insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. The steps are exactly the same like I just showed you when I'm moving up a row with the same color, but instead of using the same color, you're just switching to the next color so you get that checkerboard pattern. Again, you're just hiding the opposite color that you're using in your work. You're just draping it over just like that. After six, then you switch your colors, and then you do six more, and you switch your colors until you have the desired squares that you like. So now that I've gotten to the end, this is how many squares that I wanna do. This is where I wanna stop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut both colors, making sure that there is a little extra so you can uh, weave those in, and then I'm just going to make a slip knot. So I'm gonna yarn over, and I'm gonna pull through, and I'm gonna take those tails with me, and then I'm gonna pull tightly. And then what I like to do is I want to just 
double, not that pretty good. And there it is. And then eventually I will be weaving these into my work. Okay, I have all the pieces done now. They're all done. It's taken me a while, but I got them done. And so now it is time to uh, attach them together. So I have my back, my front or front and back. They look exactly the same. And then my left and right arm. So the two arms are the exact same size, exact same number of squares. And then of course, these are also the same size and the same number of squares. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give you guys a diagram of how I'm going to attach them because I feel like if I try to explain how I'm attaching it, it's probably going to confuse you as it's probably going to confuse me saying it. Of course, I am going to show you how I'm going to attach them together. You can attach them any way you like. I'm just going to show you what I like to do. So I made this little diagram. It shows you the front, the back, and the two arms. And where the little black X's are is where I attach them together. Now, once that has been all connected, what I'll do is I'll flip my project in half so it looks like this, and then I'll attach the arms and the sides all together. Guess it is time to attach these together, and then I can do the ribbing on the cuffs and the bottom and the neckline. And since it is almost May, it's going to get too warm for me to even wear this sweater, so I gotta, I gotta get this done now. So this is the front, this is the back, or vice versa, I'm not too sure which is which, and then this is the arm. So what I'm doing is I'm laying them all down. They all still do the checkerboard. What I like to do is I like to sew the arm on here, and I actually like to use safety pins. So then that way, like, it doesn't move on me, so like I'll attach the safety pins. And then when this is attached, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over. It's gonna be flipped over like this. And then I attach the sleeve together and then I attach the two sides together and then that will create the arm. What it will end up looking like when it is all attached. I'm going to show you how I attach these. The color that I had started like my chaining at the very beginning of the project on like each one of the parts, I'm gonna use that same color to attach them. I usually just pick a color that I'm already using so I could have picked the pink or I could have picked the orange. So I'm just gonna stick with the orange. Right now I'm attaching the arm. It's the last thing that I have to attach. As you can see, the arm is now attached to the back or the front. I'm not too sure what side this is yet, but this is what it looks like when it is attached and it's already attached here. Now where the safety pins come into play and what I like to use them for, because of the colors, they're not lining up perfectly. You know, each square is always a little bit different. I can't be perfect. I just like to make sure that the colors are lining up in the center. So I'll take my safety pin and then I will just pin that just to be safe. I'm gonna take my yarn and I'm gonna make myself a slip knot. There we go, put my hook through. The sweater's so heavy that it just wants to like fall to the ground. To attach them, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find where I left off. I'm gonna insert on one side and then just go parallel through to the other side. I'm yarning over and then I'm pinching everything that I just put my hook through besides the where I just yarned over. And then I'm making sure that my hook is catching the yarn. Oh my goodness, what are you doing? You're not the star of the show, you gotta move. Make sure my hook is latching on to what I just yarned over and then I'm pulling through all of it. Unfortunately, when it comes to attaching sides like this, the sides are not pretty. They're not gonna look like the end here where you can clearly see each individual stitch. I guesstimate. As long as it's attached and it's solid and you're okay with it and you like what you're doing, then that's, that's all that matters. For me, I just find the next opening. So like right here, and then the next opening on this side is right here. I'm just gonna yarn over and pinch and pull through. Okay, so I'm just finding the next opening and making sure it's parallel over here, yarn over, pull through. So we're just doing a bunch of slip stitches and that's just yarning over, pulling through, nothing fancy. And then also while I'm doing this, I'm making sure that this is still lined up. You can see here, I, my orange is just a little bit longer than my pink and it happens to me all the time. How I fix that, I'm gonna go into my next stitch and then I'm gonna go back. So I'm going to go to the same one that I had went over here before. So I've already looped through that. I'm going to do it again. The next one I'm going to go through and then look for a parallel one here and over pull through. Then I'm going to find another opening. And because there's still a lot more orange than pink, again, I'm going to go back here and over pull through. So now that I'm here and they're lined up, I can take my safety pin out 
and I can move my safety pin down to the next two squares so I know that they're lined up. And that is essentially it. I'm gonna continue doing this till the very end and then I'm gonna show you how I tie this off and then it is time to work on the ribbing. I'm gonna do one more at the end here. Yarn over, pull through. Why can't I just have everything together? But no, because that would be too convenient. I lost my scissors. I couldn't find my scissors and then I found two pairs of scissors. But anyways, what I'm gonna do is now that I did that, I'm going to cut my working yarn. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna pull through, uh, pull tightly. Now, as you can see where I had started my sleeve, with this orange. I'm gonna actually tie it off with where I just finished attaching my sleeve. So I'll just do like a few knots and that's that. Attaching the neck, I did leave that to the very last because I wasn't too sure how big I needed the neck opening to be. Here's the little diagram and where the X's are is where I attached it and right in the middle there is where I left open. Now on each side, I did attach two squares together. So like the front and the back will have the two squares attached plus an extra inch on the two little middle squares there. That way the opening is not that wide. Again, these are for my measurements and how I like the fit of the sweater. You might need to make the opening a little bit bigger or you might need to make the opening a little bit smaller. It is like a little bit bulky like right here, but it's not even that bulky. To me, that's fine. I like this, this is what I like. Now I gotta work on the ribbing. For the ribbing, I'm actually just gonna do one solid color. I was kind of thinking maybe I would do orange ribbing here and then switch over to the pink ribbing so it's still opposite. This is a little too much work for my liking, so I don't wanna do it. So I decided to go with orange because that's the color that I started with and I think it will blend a lot better. I don't think I know it will because I've already done one of the sleeves. So this is what the finished sleeve looks like when it's done. And as you can see, you don't even see that orange that's here, you don't really see that anymore. Now for this here, I'm actually gonna be doing 10 high. I always get scared and I stop at seven or at five or anything like that. And I never go all the way up to the 10 because I'm like, oh, it's so it's so long. But really, it's not as long as you think it is. You might remember this sweater. This sweater that took me months to make. This is the ribbing I did on it. There is one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six ribbing. And today what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be doing 10. So there is a significant difference, almost double the size. But what I really want to show you is the bottom. And the bottom, I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I did nine. This is nine. This is one less than this because when you wear it, it stretches, okay? So it's not going to stay the length that you want it, it's going to shrink up a little bit. That's what happens to me. It shrinks up on me when I wear it. If you want the more exaggerated, bigger cuff, don't be afraid to do it. Just do it because I really, really wish that I had done a bigger cuff on this. And being quite honest, I might take it apart when I have time and redo the cuffs on this because I love this size. This is what I was looking for. And I kind of chickened out and was like, oh, that, that's way too big. I'm just gonna stick with like, you know, five or six. Shouldn't have done it. Another thing that I like to do is I like to make sure Sure that I am on the outside of my garment. So I'm not working on the inside layer right where we stitched. I'm working on the outside. The best example is this one here. This is what the ribbing is gonna look like, how it has that. Now, of course, it looks a little different. A little scallops, but this one you don't really notice them that much because of this line of orange that I had on the sleeve. Do you see this? This is what happens on the inside. That's why I like working on the outside and not the inside is because this is what happens to the inside and you don't really want this on the outside unless, unless this is the look you're going for. Then do the opposite of what I'm saying. I like to start where I stitch them together because when I get back to here, I'm going to tie up the end with these loose threads. To start the ribbing, we're gonna wanna do a slip knot just like every other thing. Slip knot that. I'm gonna be going through each one of these, the chains. So these were the chains that we started off with. To do a slip stitch, I'm inserting my hook through one of these chains. I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna pinch everything and pull through. So I only have one loop left. I'm doing 10. I need to chain 11 because when you turn it around, you need to skip one. That way you get a nice clean edge. I'm gonna chain 11. Let's yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Looking at how long this is always freaks me out, but like I showed you, it's gonna turn out amazing. Working my way back down, I'm going to skip that 11th chain and I'm gonna be doing single crochets. 
So I'm going to insert into the tenth chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Into the next one, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. You are going through each one of these chains until you get down to the bottom. So I do count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which means I have to do one more. Sometimes I don't trust myself. I do you like going back and counting? Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Now it's time to show you how it like cinches together. You see all these chains? I'm going to do a slip stitch through five of them. The next chain, I'm going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. That's two. Go into the next one, three, four, five, five times. And now I have to work my way back up. So you see if you put your hook through, right? You have your two little spaces just like that. We're only gonna be going through one of them. So the top one here is facing like up, whereas this row is facing down. Okay, so it's down towards you, up, away from you, depending on where you're holding it. Like if you're holding it straight like this, away, towards, but if you're holding it like this way towards you, then that's up, down. I hope that makes sense. We're gonna go into the 10th one here at the bottom, and we're gonna go into the top one. You're yarning over, pulling through, yarning over, pulling through both loops. We're still doing single crochets, and then we're gonna move into the next one. So we're going into the top, you're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Again, we're moving over to the next one now. Just through the top, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And you just keep going until you have 10. When you're at the top and you have 10, you're gonna yarn over and pull through. So we're just chaining that extra one. Again, we wanna have nice clean lines at the top, so we always have to chain that. You know how this here, as it's facing us, we have the bottom and we have the top. When we turn it, because we now we have to work back down, they switch. So this here was the top and now it's the bottom. And this side here was the bottom and now it's the top. We're still working in the top. Always the side facing away from you, even though we spun it. Just because this is the side we were working on before isn't the side that we're working on now. And then eventually when we get back down here, it flip flops again. Working our way back down, we're skipping that 11th chain that we had just done. And we're only going in the top stitch, yarning over, pulling through, yarning over, pulling through two. Again, just single crochets going through the top and we go down all the way to the bottom. We're gonna go into the next stitch here and we're doing five slip stitches into the next stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and then we're working our way back up again. You see how we were working this way and now we're flipping it back this way, going into the 10th one at the bottom and only through the top. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So you go up, you go down, you do five slip stitches and then you go back up and you go back down and you continue this all the way until we're here. So I'm gonna quickly go, not quickly, it's gonna take me a little bit of time, but I'm gonna go and do that. And then when I get back here, I'm gonna show you how I finish my cuff. I'm on my last ribbing right now. And as you can see, there isn't five spaces. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna do as many spaces as I can. So that's one, two, three. So I can only do three spaces before I turn back around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back up. I'm not gonna chain the 11th one because now it's time to connect it. What I like to do is I like to connect it at the top and then work my way down. So then that way I can tie it off with this little loose end here. Now in order to do this, I do need to flip my arm inside out and make sure that I don't lose my end. I'm gonna take my safety pin again, pull my end out a little bit, swap that out for a second, flip my arm inside out. I'm gonna work my way down by doing slip stitches. So I'm gonna insert at the top here. I'm going to take my pin out, insert there, and then I'm going to pull my yarn through. So my yarn is still connected to the ball yarn that is through here. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through both of them. And just doing some slip stitches all the way down. And then I'm gonna put my finger through just to make sure there isn't any hole there. Great. Then I'm going to cut this yarn. Then I'm gonna yarn over, pull through, pull tightly. Take the end here and I'm just gonna knot it with one of these strings. That's why I like to end at the bottom because then I can knot it. 
And let's flip this guy back. And there we have the finished one. And this is where I ended. So that's what it looks like. Looks a little different, but I mean, it's gonna be the underside of your arm anyway, so you're not even gonna notice. The bottom, I'm not gonna show you the bottom just because I'm actually doing the exact same thing for here. I'm doing the skipping five and I'm doing the, the 10 up. The bottom is the exact same as this. So this is the bottom, the exact same. Okay, so now that the project is done, I have to do the finishing touches, which is weaving in all of my loose ends. You can use a yarn needle. Uh, I still haven't found my yarn needle from the last project I did. And even I think from that project, I didn't know where it was. And then I found it at one point, but now it's gone again. I'm gonna use my crochet hook. So before I snake them in, if there's like a cluster of, you know, just loose ends, what I'll do is I will just double knot a few of them together. Let's double knot these two. And now I can weave them in. How I like to weave in my ends with a crochet hook. That way, if you don't have a yarn needle, you did this project with a crochet hook, so you can use a crochet hook. I like to put my hook through, kind of like snake it back and forth. Let's just go through that. Just kind of snake it in and then I'll grab the yarn that I want hidden and I loop it over. So I will loop it over my hook and then kind of pinch it and then just pull through what I just snaked. Okay, and then I just pull that through okay, and then I'll pull my project so it's kind of like that. Then I'll take my scissors and cut the ends off. And that is how that's done. go this is what it looks like all done I mean you did see how it looked like all done before the video but here I am standing up so you can see it in all its glory I really like these colors together they are so cute I am just so happy with this look it's so comfortable and I learned my lessons from my rose square sweater that I applied to this sweater maybe stand on my tippy toes the bottom as you can see is actually the same width as the cuffs so if I go like this you can see that maybe the bottom has lost a little bit of length because it's stretched out over my body. The ribbing will stretch width-wise rather than length-wise. Another thing is when you are going by your arm length, if you look at here, my arm doesn't start to this square. My arm doesn't start like up here where a normal sweater or a normal shirt would fit. It actually starts all the way down here. So your end squares on the sides are kind of like your first square into the rest of your arm. I think the length is pretty good for my arms. Again, if you watch the whole video that I did give you the measurements of everything that I did, so then that way you can adjust it to your own body type or you can just do the same same pattern as me. Collar is nice as well and what I ended up doing was instead of doing the collar at the start of the squares here, I moved it in an inch on both sides. I think that's pretty much all that I can say about this project is that like I absolutely love it. I think it's super cute. I would love to make another one. I think that will do it for this video. If you're new to my channel like sewing, crafting, but mainly thrifting videos, why not subscribe? You can also follow me on my Instagram which is Fancy Dinosaur Tea Party. I think that is it. So y'all have a good day now.